Now we'll welcome to the next part of the procedural trees in Houdini with also the Pivot Painter tool. So this part we're going to talk a bit more about the Pivot Painter, especially the Pivot Painter 2. Um, so there is a difference between the first version and the second version. So the second version will be able to export textures and hold more data to do some interesting things. Let's talk a bit first about the Houdini part. So we now have our tree and we need to calculate certain data that Unreal can work with. So if we type in a tree again, we actually have a tool for this, uh, which is either called the tree pivot painter or uh, the tree hierarchy. So if you, for example, use the hierarchy one, this will basically uh, output a attribute for the pivot painter. So if we go into our attributes, you can see that it will create an attribute here called hierarchy. And this will basically hold information about the branches. I can also here visualize what's going on. So you can see that each branch leaf has a different value, uh, which is then be will and that will then be controlled into the pivot painter uh, material and shader. So you can see that this is all the data that is now generated. So this will then help uh, into the output. You can also define uh, the namings here. So here we have like the prefix namings. Uh, so it's like using gen branch. So you can fill in something custom if you want to. You don't necessarily have to tweak this. We also here have an option to assign materials. So when I click this, I will assign some materials. Because often what we want to do in a game engine, we want to give different materials to the leaves and then to the trunk, of course. Unless it's like merged into one texture if you have that. So we are basically done. Like this tool is just preparing the data. It's not doing anything else. It's just making this attribute for you. Uh, so you don't have to manually go through that step. Next is actually just clicking the button to create a pivot painter node. You can also just type in to have the pivot painter. So here we can have pivot painting. And then we have that node here available. Then here we have this node. So the easiest way is to just actually just click this button. Let me uh, do that here quickly. So click button and it will automatically make that for you. So at the top here, we have our export button. So this is actually done to save our files. We can have the mode, which is either Pivot Painter 1 or 2. So in this case, of course, we're going to use the second version, which is a bit more, which is better. Uh, we can have specific naming. Uh, we can set a directory where to store the files. Uh, we then here have then advanced options. This is the textures that will be exported. And it can actually choose some of the data, as you could see here. Uh, so in this case, by default, both of them will probably be the same. So it will both export uh, the pivot position uh, and the parent index. So you can, for example, say that in a second texture, this is, for example, uh, the X vector. And this might be depending on what you want to do uh, with the shaders. Uh, you will have to look into your Unreal file for that on how things are set up. So now let's give this a proper naming. Uh, for example, a tree demo or something. And we're going to just uh, find a place to, st to store this. So once you fill that in, we're just going to click export and it will then output the files. So this is what the output would look like. So only these three files, those are some other tests that I did. So we have our basic tree. So this is just the FBX file. So the FBX file gets exported with this. And it then also includes those two textures that we made here. So one texture is actually uh, holding the pivot point data and the other texture is then this X vector. So those two textures are important to, uh, to have. Before I go further, maybe I want to explain a bit about how this pivot painter tool, in case you want to use this for other things as well. So let me use a null node here to visualize the output here, the second output. So these are just a bunch of points containing the pivot locations. So if you look at our tree, you can see that each of these points is representing a pivot of, for example, a branch. So here all the way at the bottom, this single point represents actually the trunk pivot. And then we can see that, for example, this point represents here this branch. And I can go further. So this point represents this branch and these smaller points here all represent those single leaves. So with that pivot in mind, we can then, for example, scale things up. We can uh, fake things like wind based on like what type of level. So either it's, for example, the level only of this or 
you can take the level of the branches and so on. So that's sort of how that works. So here a bit more simplified. So here I have, for example, these three boxes. So let's say I want to build a custom pivot point system. Then I would basically have to uh, calculate a point on where I would like to see the pivot. It can be in the middle. It can be at the bottom of an object. It's up to you where you want to see those pivot points. Now on these points, you, you want to first of all make sure that they are, are in the right location and you also want to build that hierarchy structure that's also important for the tool. So for example, the point that starts can just be called root. The next one calls then root slash path one and so on. Like you can build up that hierarchy. So that's how you would do it with a more custom object. That's why we built a labs three hierarchy node. So you actually don't have to create this by yourself. It will actually be generated for you. Again, if you are building something that's custom and you want to custom generate pivot locations, you need to have a system for that in place as well, of course. So when you open the learning project of Unreal, uh, you will see this uh, examples here. And we want to specifically look for the pivot painter stuff. So here under maps, we're going to just type in pivot painter and you'll see there are two maps of them. So we want to open the pivot painter too. And then you will have the map with those examples. So you can see that there are some examples built for you, like this thing with a, with like a wind example. You have here like this is by uh, selecting the hierarchy. So this is actually again why we need to create that hierarchy inside of uh, Houdini. Here is another example of how we can like build objects. So there is a lot of cool stuff you can do with uh, with the Perfect Painter. And then of course there are some trees as example here. So now let's continue by bringing in our own stuff that we just made. So here we can actually find a folder uh, containing some of the pivot point data. So if you want to quickly find a folder, just for example, select a tree, click on the browsing icon here, and then we have like uh, the folders here. So pivot painter. I already made a folder here for tutorial. So for this tutorial, and I will actually then now import those files. So I'm just going to drag and drop them in here. Um, you can have like some specific import settings here. For example, to import normals and tangents, I don't think is necessary, uh, but you can have that as well. And we also here have those two materials. Uh, it's not needed for now, so you're just gonna delete them. And what it will be important is to actually set up the texture correctly. So if you, if you would look at the example here of this one, and if you look at here, the material, if you look at then the texture, if you open a texture, we can see that this is set to like very specific settings, like uh, it's HDR, uh, sRGB is off, it's set to filtering nearest, uh, also no mid maps. So those are important settings to also translate to our custom uh, textures here. So we want to say that this is an HDR. Uh, so those are correct here. Filtering needs to be nearest. And we're going to go here to the mid map, saying that there's no mid maps needed then we're going to go here to the same so which are making the nearest filter and no mid maps so that's all right then we have our tree so i can grab my tree now in the scene you can see it's perfectly working we also have two materials so one for the branches and one for the leaves so that would be great now for testing this out i'm just going to take a shader uh, from the content examples so here we can, for example, take the shader from the wind, but we can also take the shader here for the, showing the hierarchy. So the nice thing with this shader is that you get a really nice uh, view of how actually everything is working. So we're just going to click here, search for the shader. Going to right click, make an instance of this. And, and we're just going to say tree uh, tutorial, for example. And I might then drag this into my tutorial folder here just so it's like a bit structured. So we're going to open the shader. We're going to enable, of course, our textures and we're going to overwrite them. So make sure you're plugging in the right textures. So here we have the pivot texture and then we also have then the X vector texture. And we're going to click save. And we're going to now drag and drop that on our own tree. Like so. And if everything went right, you see something similar like this. 
So you can see that the hierarchy is perfectly working. So first we have the trunk, then we have the smaller branches and so on. We can change the parameters here of this material. Um, so this is the value that might can be interesting to play around with. So, so set it here to minus 10, for example, and we can see that this works really well. So we have our trunk, then the branches, and then the smaller leaves. Now let's go into another example here. Uh, and that is here, for example, having this wind effect. So again, I'm just going to grab the shader. Uh, you can, of course, like open these shaders uh, and start to look at how they are built. Um, you can definitely look at that. So often actually Unreal uh, supports this by already making some collapsed nodes for this. So you don't have to set up this all the time. So what we want to do is we want to uh, make a duplicate. So this is already being instanced. So we can just say instant duplicate. Um, just going to say tutorial tree or wind, for example. And I'm going to drag this again here to my tutorial folder. So move here. We're going to open this. And we, of course, want to override our pivots and the X vector. So press save. Then I want to select my tree and I want to then use. Uh, this part here. So you can see that this is working. So it might be a bit too much intense, like it's quite intense, uh, this wind. So maybe that's, I'm going to maybe put my tree over here for a moment. So now we can play around with the settings. Um, you can see that there are multiple sort of like tabs. So we have like wind one, two, three, four. And this is also again, like working with the, the sort of like that hierarchy structure. Uh, and again, like, the, and here I have the rotation value plays a important role. So if I increase this, uh, you can see that <laughs> this will go quite crazy. So that's why it's, it is on a low value. So we can have this as like, how much can something be rotated? How strong will the effect be? So if I put this on a lower value, you will see that's a bit better. Uh, and we can then choose on how, on what levels they are. So if I, for example, disable this animation level. Uh, you will see that slowly there will be less and less influence of wind. So right now the wind effect is mainly uh, on the leaves themselves, but not so much on the other parts. So this right now doesn't look that good. So it's quite interesting to again enable actually most of them to have a quite interesting effect. And level one is actually then our main truck. So if I enable this, you can see that actually now the whole tree starts to bend. Uh, and again, this little, this value, the less of sort of like movement this will be. So if you want some movement of the trunk in there, we can increase that. So of course, if we increase this quite high, like to one, like this is like pretty crazy. Uh, so you can get some cool results here, but it's quite uh, recommended to being like a bit more subtle with the values. So again, these, these, these values from one, two and three and four, they are more based on like the hierarchy levels you are building in, inside of your network. And that's all what I wanted to show with this video. So I mainly talked about how we can get some nice, interesting effects with trees uh, using the Pivot Painter toolset. So this works really well in real, really cool features built for this. And I hope you learned some things from this videos and thank you for watching.